Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will understand how to test FIS. This is the EAC Lightning Arrestor and we will look at the testing requirements as per NFC 17 102-2011 testing standard. But why should you listen to me? At Axis, we have been manufacturing a wide range of earthing and lightning protection products, including lightning arrestors, for more than 30 years. You will see our products installed in solar farms, data centers, commercial and residential projects in more than 100 countries. But let's start off with asking what is an EAC lighting arrestor? Also known as an early streamer emission lightning arrestor, this technology offers safety from direct lightning strikes. The aim of this device is simple. It increases the radius of protection as compared to conventional arrestors. By doing so, it reduces the number of lightning arrestors and down conductors you will need for your building yet it provides complete protection. This product protects you by ensuring that the lightning bolts are safely channeled. Instead of striking random objects, the lightning is directed through the ASC lightning arrestor into the ground safely. Let's understand what the NFC standard is. The NFC 17102-2011 standard is a set of guidelines and recommendations on how to design and install lightning protection systems using the ESC arrestor. It aims to make lightning protection safer and more effective. The standard was developed by the French National Standard Committee by Commission UF81. It covers how ESE systems should be selected, placed, installed and maintained. By setting operating conditions, testing requirements and installation guidelines, the NFC standard helps ensure ESE systems work reliably during lightning strikes. Let's start by understanding the operating conditions of this product. The standard defines normal operating conditions as temperatures from minus 20 degrees to plus 60 degrees Celsius and wind speeds lower than 122 km per hour. If conditions go beyond this range, such as extreme temperatures, strong winds, snow, ice or heavy pollution, the arrestor is considered to be in abnormal conditions. However, the standard requires it to remain reliable in both cases. Finally. Let's go through testing requirements as per Annex C of NFC 17102. So firstly, the general requirements. Your EAC arrestor must be clearly marked. The marking must include the manufacturer's name, logo or trademark product reference, early streamer emission efficiency and serial number. Secondly, mechanical requirements. The parts of the EAC arrestor that carry lightning current must include solid materials with enough cross-section to carry high current safely. For example, copper, Aluminium, stainless steel or hot dip galvanized steel must be used with a minimum cross-sectional area of 200 square millimeters. This means a diameter of at least 16 millimeters for round rods. Thirdly, corrosion resistance. Your AAC lighting arrestor must resist corrosion. This is important in coastal zones, industrial sites and polluted urban areas. To test this, there are two methods. First, the arrestor is placed in a salt spray chamber where it is exposed to a fine mist of sodium chloride solution. This creates a controlled environment that speeds up the effect of salty air on your arrestor. This shows how the arrestor handles long-term exposure to sea air. In the second method, the arrestor goes through a sulfur dioxide test under the NFEN ISO 6988 standard. It runs for 7 cycles and each cycle lasts for 24 hours. For 8 hours, the arrestor stays at 40 degrees Celsius in a humid atmosphere with 667 parts per million of sulfur dioxide. That means for every 1 million parts of air, there are 667 parts of sulfur dioxide mixed in. Then it rests for 16 hours before the cycle repeats. If you're finding this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos on electrical engineering. Firstly, current withstand capability. This test ensures if the arrestor can survive a real lightning strike. For this, they create a test current that acts like lightning. It rises very fast within 10 microseconds and reaches up to 100 kA. Then it slowly fades over 350 microseconds. The arrestor is hit with this current three times. If it keeps working after all three, it passes the test. This shows the arrestor can handle multiple strikes, just like it might in real-world conditions. After the test, it must not have any damage or holes. Burn marks on the surface are fine. These checks prove that the arrestor can carry real lightning current without failing. Number 5. Requirements for ESC The early streamer emission is measured as a time difference called delta T. It shows how early the ESC arrestor responds compared to a conventional lightning rod under the same conditions. 
This time difference is recorded during testing and used to rate the arrestor's performance. Delta T must fall between 10 and 60 microseconds. If it is below 10, the device is not considered an ASC arrestor. If it is above 60, the value is capped at 60 microseconds for all protection calculations. Delta T is important because it defines the protection radius. A higher delta T means the arrestor reacts earlier and protects a wider area. The components that capture the lightning strike, mainly the tip of the lightning arrestor, must meet the size and finish requirements given in NFC 17102. The striking point must be made from solid metal with a smooth continuous surface. If it has a coating, the minimum thickness must be 50 microns and it must be free of defects like cracks or tarnishing. These checks make sure the arrestor can take the full strike and stay intact. Number 6. Verification Lightning protection systems are classified by risk from level 1 to level 4. Level 1 is for the highest risk like tall buildings or sensitive sites. Level 4 is for low risk areas like small structures. The lightning protection system must be verified after the ESC arrestor is installed. It should also be checked at regular intervals as specified in Table 7 of the NFC 17102 standard. According to this table, for protection levels 1 and 2, a visual check is needed every year and a full check in every 2 years. For levels 3 and 4, the visual check is needed every 2 years and the full check every 4 years. Critical systems must be fully inspected every year, no matter the level. I hope you now have a clear understanding of the testing requirements of this product. The ERC arrestors manufactured at Axis are type tested by an independent third-party lab in full compliance with the NFC 17102 standard. At Axis, we have a team of 50 plus engineers who are here to help you in designing, installing and testing your lightning protection systems. Our products have been used in substations, data centers, factories and even in everyday residential and commercial buildings. Before skipping to any other video, please note that these technicalities are different for conventional lightning arresters. How are ESC arresters different from conventional ones? Understand by watching this video right here.